Hi, uh, this is a walkthrough of the Watts 4000 up and running project. So I'm going to walk through this, the requirements of this project. Um, and I'm also going to point out a few things related to getting Vue.js up and running. Um, when we'll be using Vue CLI 3 for our tooling. So that is like not, we're still, we're using Vue 2 as our, our Vue source, but we're using the tooling which helps us build Vue into static files. We're using Vue 3 here. Uh, so let me fork this and we'll take a look at some of the information about this while that's forking. Um, so we have this book. Um, this is the Vue um, uh, 4000 uh, or the, the book for Watts 4000 uh, Vue and its application development. We're working using Vue.js. <clears throat> and this particular uh, assignment walkthrough requires us to um, have a front end and to get our front end environment set up. Now, in this video, I'm not going to cover installation of Node and Git and setting up a Git account. So that's covered maybe in other videos or in the class. So I'm going to assume that you have Node and you have uh, Git and, and a GitHub account already set up. So I was able to fork to my GitHub account there. And let's just take a look at how that's going. So let's see. Yes, so now I am in, I've got the forked version going <clears throat> for 4000 up and running that I forked from SU Web Dev. And I'm ready to clone this. So I'm going to go ahead and with SSH, I'm going to use the clone with SSH. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to get that into. So I have a projects uh, area with a video 4000 here and I'll just clone my project in there and then we'll just open that with Visual Studio Code and take a look at what we have. So a lot of this project requirements um, is about it's, it's about getting to know this environment that you're working in. So we're not really going to be writing any code but we're just going to work through some of the um, processes that are given to us by CLI3 and um, <clears throat> then we're going to just examine what we produce as a result. Uh, and just to point out that in the book, uh, you'll read about this. So you'll, the core concept of dev environments, dev tooling, so Node and CLI. There are a few differences in setting up Node if you're working in Windows or Mac, um, how to test your version. So <clears throat> I can go to the command line here and just show you my current version. Um, so node, <clears throat> I'm at 11.8 and npm which is downloaded with node, that's our package manager and we'll be looking at package.json to see how that works uh, to get libraries from npmjs.org and then um, so these are the important things that are installed and I've got git installed so I'm ready to start working um, as far as that part of the setup. Um, there's some notes for Windows users that you can use Git Bash um, instead of, um, you know, to, to kind of be using the, the Unix type commands, the Bash command, the Bash interface will do that. And then we're going to work on this project. So this is in 3.8 of the book. <clears throat> And we're just going to work through this. So this, these instructions kind of parallel, but give some more information, the instructions that you'll get in the README. So, and you can see in the README that you've got these things set up. You've got a local environment. Now we've forked it to our GitHub. We've cloned it. And so we're sitting here in our command line and we're told to run npm install. And so npm is the node package manager and that is going to go out to, uh, if we go to npmjs.org, this is the repository online. And what's going to happen here is our package JSON specifies dev dependencies and dependencies that when we run npm install, it will install all of this code for us. So for instance, if I look at view out here, um, 
it will pull down all of the code in this GitHub for us. So the, the view is open source and it pulls this code. And then view in turn has its own package JSON with its own dependencies. Um, so you can see that view has a lot of dependencies. All those will be brought in. So it's kind of a recursive process with NPM of pulling your specified dependencies and then all of the dependencies that those rely on. And that happens with the NPM install. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so it's just reaching out through the internet to npmjs.org and pulling that down. It's putting them into a node modules folder um, and you notice it's grayed out. That is because I have added node modules to my get ignore. I don't want to push that code up to get because it's the kind of thing where I just want to give anyone who's using my repo instructions that they should run npm install and get these for wherever they're working their local machine, but I don't want to store all these node modules. If you look at this folder, it's a huge amount of files. Okay, just a huge amount. Um, and this is the way that we work with frameworks. And, you know, even, you know, with vanilla J JavaScript, you will sometimes um, pull in node modules and reference them in your index HTML. So this is a way to get libraries in general. But specifically, um, we are going to be using these for and for our view work. And you can see that we picked up view. It's version two, so we're using view version two, um, and it provides us with some scripts. And we're going to be using those. So if we look at the notes here, after we've run npm install, we're going to test the site. So we're going to run a development server by calling npm run serve. And those npm run commands are provided in the scripts object. So if I look at serve, um, it's calling this view CLI service. So there is a script there that we have picked up as a dependency. So that was coming from our dependencies. And so npm can call out to, um, to files that it has downloaded to run them. And so view service has a number of options and view serve will, will run our, our dev server. So if I run npm uh, run serve, this should fire up a server. Now this doesn't generate any code that I'm going to see in a file system, but more it's in memory. And I can now click on localhost. And this is the program that I'm looking at. And all of the code that runs that program so you got to think two things going on. There's code that runs your build, and then there's code that runs your, your, the code that you've written. So all the code you've written is going to be in this source file, or in public, your index.html will be in the public directory. Um, and in the source file, you have components. So we have this editor component. It's composed of some, some HTML, some JavaScript, and then some CSS and notice it's scoped. So there's a lot of new things going on here. This is a file called editor.view. I can't open that file in a browser. There is nothing, and browsers don't read files with, with code put together like this. You know, browsers need to have JS files, CSS files, link through index.html. So, and you can see in the index.html, I'm not, I don't have any, links going on. Well, I guess I have a couple of links going on here to, to bring in the markup uh, library and lodash, which is a npm fun function. But I don't have any of my code linked into there. So that happens in a build step, which we'll get to. But in this in this serve, npm serve, I can, it's actually putting it all together in memory. It creates this this server and I can open it up and I have a markdown editor so I can practice markdown in here. And again, the editor is, um, if we look in the editor view, uh, you can see that it is uh, calling, calling the editor for me. It's using dbounce, which is a lodash function. So in, in terms of understanding this code, you don't need to totally understand this. We were calling a marked function. And 
But what we really want to understand is the process and some of the tooling that is going on to take this editor view and turn it into something that will run in the browser. And also to see that we have this dev environment, which we can get going with the npm run serve to set up that server. And then the next step is we want to call, um, oh, so we want to kind of, we're going to get to npm run build, but we're actually going to build files. But we want to look at um, the directories, interpreting their names, where's the view app defined, what is listed in package JSON. So we want you to see these questions and come up with answers for yourself based on what you see. There is also a lot of documentation in the um, when you in the reading here. So um, in the project file itself, it shows you pictures and it defines what these files do, what kind of what their what's their contents and what they're doing. Um, so all of what's all of what we're doing is kind of reviewed in the in the book. But let's get back here and the next thing, so to, to stop that server, so you start the server, again, npm run serve, it, gener it runs through, and it, it actually creates a live server so that when you make changes in code, they change in your browser. Um, but control C will stop the browser. And then you're gonna run npm run build. So now we're running the build script. And one of the things that you'll see in the reading is that the view config, so there's three config files, view config, Babel config, and alias config, aliases config. You'll read about those. But in view config, we're telling it to output these files that it creates to the docs directory. And the reason why is then we can serve these up in GitHub from the docs directory. So we don't want to dump them in master the way we might with vanilla JavaScript because we've got a lot of other things going on there. Um, usually the convention is to dump them into a dist directory so that other people if distributed might use your, your compiled code. But for our purposes, we're going to dump them in docs. And then you can see that the this command, I want you to kind of examine the output of this, that we created uh, a couple of files. We created a vendor JS file, um, another JS file that's quite a bit smaller, and then a CSS file. So it it kind of took our um, editor view and our app view, kind of took all the code in there and then created. So it's all kind of mixed together, JavaScript. HTML and CSS and created separate files, static files that we can serve. So once we have those, I mean, we can serve those just like we would serve uh, any static file we built, any static HTML, CSS. We can actually open that with live server. And um, let's see, did that open up here? Okay. Oh, I seem to have another port open there. So let me just close that on another file on another project. So let's try and open that again. So you can only have one one project per port. But you can see I can run the docs index HTML um, via live server because these are basically just static files and we can run them through any HTTP server. And when we deploy these to GitHub we can uh, you know, set them up with GH pages to run out there. So taking a look, so we, we create these files um, and we have a link here to understand deployment and that's just describing the CLI3 that we're using. And we can see that it's going into the docs directory because we've, we've done that configuration. So um, we're, we're just taking a, a built, a, a Vue.js, uh, project and getting it running and using some of the tooling here. And then after the NPM run, just want you to take a look and answer these questions. Um, so you're going to, you know, go look at this node modules and just say what's in there. And we've kind of talked about that. Look at NPM run, serve and build, um, how those work. We've talked a little about that. What are dependencies and um, the dependencies object and exploring the docs directory 
so we saw the static files. Looking at these, uh, looking at the contents of those JS files, so they're going to look a little different to you. And I'll, I'll let you take a look and kind of see what's going on. We're getting a lot out of that build besides just pulling the file, the code out, and, and we call that transpiling when we when we take uh, code of one type and turn it into code of another type. Um, we're also getting some minification. So take a look at the those files that got created in docs. And let's see, so we see that we have some JS files and some CSS files. Um, and then describe in your own words what happens when npm run build command works. So you can almost think of maybe a flow chart or, or some kind of diagram or um, you know what 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 is happening and maybe you only have two steps but maybe you can see more steps going on when you when you make that command and then also take a and make a diagram about um, that documents your interpretation of the architecture of this system so this types of web architectures is described in the book uh, let's see so I think I have that Let's see, we'll go here. Types of web architecture. All right, so in this software architecture uh, diagram here under 2.2, there are some diagrams that were created by the author to indicate what a static website architecture might look like. And you know, in drawing these diagrams, you can you can pretty much do them however you want. You could do them with paper and pen, you could find a drawing tool, um, but think about what you've created with this up and running. What kind of files, do they match a static website architecture where you're you know, reading files off a file system and then sending them um, out through a web server to a browser? Uh, are you using a dynamic website architecture, kind of like what you might have done with servers and hosting and the Flickr project where you had a server that was actually using PHP in the back end to generate HTML and then sending that out to the browser as a, you know, as a stream of HTML? Or a dynamic web architecture where you you have something like um, you are um, running an application on your browser, but it's reaching out to services on the web. And you haven't necessarily learned about services yet, but think about these architectures and what you're what you're actually serving up with this up and running, and draw a diagram for that. So that so you're producing a couple of diagrams here and so these are two two diagrams that you want to think about and then once you've got this up and running and you've created these files you're going to deploy it to github and you'll get uh, a couple of urls out of that so let's do that so we are you can see that we have created some new docs files when we ran the um, npm run build and so we'll do get add dot get commit dash m and uh, let's see we'll just call this build and get push. All right, so that should push that out to my, uh, let's see, got a few things open here, up and running. Okay, so we we push this back to the repo that we forked and the only changes that we made were these docs files. We created some docs files, some new assets. And so, um, now we should be able to get this running on GH pages just by going to settings and picking our, now we're going to pick the docs folder. So we're not running it out of master, we're running it out of docs. And 
that should be good. And I can say enforce CSS and see how that works. Open that up. Oh, let me take a look here. All right, so I've got my HTTPS, I've got my DNS name, I've got the, the account, the repo name here, and it's not rendering, and I think it should. I've noticed some problems lately on GitHub. If I add the index HTML, it seems to be just fine. Um, but uh, the other thing, and I think this is sort of a bug in GH pages, if you take the S off, you don't need that index HTML, which tells me that it's something goofy in, in GH pages. Um, I think it's better to serve HTTPS, so I use that and I just stick the index HTML on there and it serves up fine. So hopefully they fix that. I've seen it reported and I don't think there's a solution yet. But anyway, you can um, paste that into your website and you'll have a link. And then you'll want to share your github.com link so we can look at the code. And then you'll want to share this um, hosted link. And um, that should complete the assignment. So just taking a look again at the readme, you're going to be submitting two URLs just to show that you got this running on the docs folder. And then you're going to be um, submitting a couple of pictures and you know don't have to be really fancy but just to get you thinking about the flow of what happens when you run npm run build sort of like what are the input what happens what's the output and then the types of website architecture um, looking at that chapter and creating your own diagram that explains what you see happening for service here of the files that were created um, with the build process. All right, so um, happy coding.